At first glance, the United States seems like a vast land full of opportunities, stretching from ocean to ocean with every kind of landscape imaginable. The United States is home to more than 330 million people, yet most of them live in a surprisingly small share of the land. Dense clusters of population stretch along the East Coast, around the Great Lakes and across parts of California and Texas, where cities, industries, and fertile farmland have driven economic growth for centuries. These areas became centers of commerce, manufacturing, and innovation, attracting waves of migrants and shaping the country's role as a global economic powerhouse. But what about the rest of the country? Nearly 80% of the country remains difficult to inhabit, not because people can't survive there, but because the land itself sets hard limits. Vast stretches of empty land, from the frozen tundra of Alaska to the deserts of Nevada and the rugged mountains of the Rockies. These places are breathtaking in scale and beauty, yet they remain sparsely populated, with only small towns or isolated communities scattered across the landscape. Geography and climate make large-scale settlement difficult, and economic opportunities are limited compared to the bustling metropolitan hubs. Join us on this journey to uncover the hidden forces that shape where people live and where they don't. What do you choose? Crowded city or wild nature? Comment to let me know. 1. Harsh climate One of the most significant reasons why roughly 80% of the United States is sparsely populated is the extreme and often unforgiving climate across much of the country. In the American West, vast deserts such as the Mojave, Sonoran, and Great Basin are characterized by relentless summer heat, with daytime temperatures reaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. Rainfall in these areas is minimal, sometimes less than 10 inches per year, making water extremely scarce. Without major rivers, reservoirs, or advanced irrigation systems, agriculture is nearly impossible and sustaining large populations is a constant challenge. Far to the north, Alaska and the high elevations of the Rockies and Sierra Nevada present a completely different set of climatic obstacles. Winters are long and brutal, often lasting six months or more with temperatures dropping far below freezing. Snow accumulates to several feet in mountainous regions, and permafrost in northern Alaska prevents normal construction and complicates road and utility infrastructure. Even summer offers only a short window of mild weather, limiting agricultural and economic activity. Other regions, such as the central Midwest and the southeast, may have more temperate climates but face their own hazards. Tornado alleys in the Great Plains experience some of the most violent storms on the planet, while the Gulf Coast is routinely threatened by hurricanes and flooding. These recurring extreme events not only endanger lives but also disrupt communities, infrastructure, and local economies. In essence, the United States' climatic extremes, from sweltering deserts and frozen tundras to tornado-prone plains and hurricane-exposed coasts, create natural barriers to dense human settlement. These harsh conditions have historically pushed populations toward more hospitable regions, shaping the uneven distribution of people and economic development across the country. 2. Rugged Geography The country is home to some of the most dramatic landscapes on Earth, including towering mountain ranges, deep canyons, expansive plateaus, and dense forests. While these landscapes are breathtakingly beautiful, they create serious challenges for human settlement, agriculture, and infrastructure. The Rocky Mountains, which stretch from New Mexico to Canada, are among the most formidable barriers. Their steep slopes, high elevations, and rocky soil make farming nearly impossible in many areas. Harsh winters with heavy snowfall and thin air at high altitudes also make living conditions difficult and limit the construction of roads, railways, and other transportation networks. Even today, many valleys and mountain passes remain remote, accessible only by winding roads or limited rail lines. Similarly, the Sierra Nevada in California and the Cascades in the Pacific Northwest are marked by rugged terrain, thick forests, and high snowfall, particularly at higher elevations. These conditions complicate urban development and infrastructure projects. Settlements are typically confined to narrow valleys or lower elevations near rivers, leaving vast stretches of mountains largely uninhabited. The Appalachian Mountains in the eastern United States, though older and less towering than the Rockies, historically slowed westward expansion. The narrow valleys, rolling hills, and dense forests made transportation and farming labor-intensive. 
Towns developed primarily in river valleys, while much of the surrounding mountainous terrain remained isolated and underpopulated. Beyond mountains, other geographic obstacles include the Grand Canyons of Arizona and Utah, the high desert plateaus of Nevada, and the rugged Alaskan wilderness. These regions are often remote, with limited access to major highways, railroads, or airports. Even when people settle in these regions, populations remain small, and economies tend to focus on resource extraction, tourism, or seasonal activity rather than large-scale industry. 3. Limited Water Resources While the U.S. is home to massive rivers and lakes, these are concentrated in certain areas, leaving vast swaths of land with very limited access to fresh water. Without reliable water sources, agriculture, industry, and even basic daily life become major challenges. The American West is particularly affected. Deserts such as the Mojave, Sonoran, and Great Basin receive minimal rainfall, sometimes less than 10 inches per year, and lack naturally abundant surface water. Rivers like the Colorado and the Rio Grande provide lifelines for cities such as Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Albuquerque, but these rivers are heavily managed, over-allocated, and increasingly stressed by drought and climate change. In areas without rivers or reservoirs, settlements remain small and sparse. High desert plateaus, including parts of Nevada and Utah, face similar challenges. Groundwater exists in some aquifers, but it is often deep, limited, or slow to replenish, making large-scale irrigation or urban water supply difficult. Many towns in these regions rely on expensive pipelines or water diversion projects just to sustain modest populations. Even outside the deserts, mountainous areas such as the Rockies or the Sierra Nevada have uneven water distribution. Snowmelt provides seasonal rivers and streams, but water availability can fluctuate dramatically from season to season. During dry years, limited water makes farming and industry unreliable, discouraging permanent settlement. Water scarcity doesn't just affect day-to-day -day living, it also limits economic development. Cities cannot grow beyond what local water resources can sustain, and industries that require large amounts of water, such as agriculture, mining, and manufacturing, are difficult to establish in arid regions. This is one reason why population density in the American West remains low compared to the fertile, water-rich plains of the Midwest or the river valleys of the East Coast. 4. Agricultural Viability While the U.S. has some of the world's most fertile soils, these areas are concentrated, leaving vast regions where farming is extremely difficult or economically unfeasible. Without the ability to produce food locally, large-scale settlement becomes far less sustainable. The Midwest, often called America's breadbasket, boasts deep, fertile soils, relatively flat terrain, and a climate with sufficient rainfall. These conditions supported the growth of dense populations and large-scale agriculture, fueling economic development and drawing waves of migrants over the centuries. In contrast, much of the western U.S. consists of deserts, high plateaus, or rugged mountains, where soil quality is poor, rainfall is scarce, and growing seasons are short. Crops often require expensive irrigation systems or intensive management, limiting agricultural output and discouraging settlement. Even regions with seemingly abundant land can face challenges. The Rocky Mountains, Sierra Nevada, and Appalachian foothills have steep slopes, thin soils, and rocky terrain, making mechanized farming nearly impossible. Similarly, high deserts in Nevada, Utah, and parts of Arizona lack the natural water and soil conditions necessary for productive agriculture. These limitations restrict both the population that can be supported and the types of economic activity that can develop. Agricultural viability is closely tied to economic growth. In areas where farming is productive, towns and cities grow, trade networks develop, and infrastructure expands. In regions where the land cannot support crops or livestock, population density remains low, and economic opportunities are often limited to resource extraction, tourism, or small-scale local activities. 5. Accessibility and Infrastructure In the western United States, expansive deserts, high mountain ranges, and vast plateaus create significant barriers to building and maintaining infrastructure such as roads, railways, and airports. The sheer scale of these regions, combined with rugged terrain, means that settlements are often scattered hundreds of miles apart, 
Towns and small cities are isolated, and long distances between them increase the cost and complexity of delivering goods, services, and essential utilities like electricity, internet, and clean water. For example, much of Nevada, Utah, and northern Arizona is connected by only a handful of major highways. Small towns along these routes rely heavily on long-distance transportation for basic supplies, and limited transit options make commuting, trade, and emergency services challenging. In some cases, maintaining these roads requires constant repair due to extreme heat, flash floods, or shifting desert sands, further increasing costs. The challenge becomes even more pronounced in Alaska, where many communities are accessible only by plane, boat, or seasonal ice roads. Transporting food, fuel, building materials, and medical supplies is expensive, weather-dependent, and often delayed for weeks during winter storms. This isolation drives up the cost of living and reduces the appeal of establishing permanent settlements. Even when modern technology allows for remote work or online commerce, the lack of reliable utilities and transport limits large-scale development. Mountainous regions such as the Rockies and Appalachians face similar issues. Local roads often wind through narrow valleys or steep passes, making travel slow and vulnerable to natural disruptions such as landslides, heavy snow, or avalanches. Rail networks must navigate complex terrain, increasing construction and maintenance costs. These challenges directly impact economic opportunities. Industries are reluctant to invest, businesses struggle to operate efficiently, and populations remain small because communities cannot support large-scale commerce or services. Even with advances in engineering and technology, the cost of extending essential infrastructure, power grids, water systems, internet connectivity, and reliable transportation into remote or rugged regions often outweighs potential economic benefits. 6. Historical Settlement Patterns The East Coast was the first part of the country to see large-scale European settlement. Fertile river valleys, natural harbors, and relatively mild climates made it ideal for farming, trade, and urban development. Cities like Boston, New York, and Philadelphia grew rapidly, establishing economic, political, and cultural hubs. Once these areas were developed, migration patterns naturally favored them, reinforcing population density along the coast and the inland river systems. In contrast, the interior and western parts of the country were settled much later. Mountain ranges, deserts, and harsh climates slowed westward expansion, and early settlers often concentrated along rivers and flat plains where farming was feasible. Even after technological advances allowed for railroads and irrigation, many of these regions remained lightly populated because the infrastructure and economic opportunities could not yet support large communities. Historical settlement also shaped economic development. Regions settled early had time to build cities, factories, and trade networks, creating jobs and attracting more settlers. Remote areas with difficult terrain or harsh climate remained dependent on small-scale resource extraction ranching or mining, rather than diversified economies. This historical legacy continues to influence population patterns today, with large swaths of the West, the Rockies, and Alaska remaining sparsely inhabited. In conclusion, the vast and varied landscapes of the United States, from scorching deserts and towering mountains to frozen tundras and remote plateaus, have shaped where people live and how communities develop. Harsh climates, rugged geography, limited water, and historical settlement patterns have all combined to leave nearly 80% of the country sparsely populated. Economic opportunities, infrastructure, and access to resources continue to reinforce this distribution, creating a striking contrast between bustling urban centers and wide-open, empty spaces. The next time you look at a map of the U.S., remember that the seemingly empty regions are not unimportant. They are home to unique ecosystems, natural resources, and breathtaking landscapes, even if only a few people live there. What do you think? Would you choose the quiet isolation of these remote areas or the energy of crowded cities? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this deep dive into the geography of America.